Hi, and welcome to the five minute check in. So as temperatures drop and we start to approach the fall, it's time to start talking about vaccinations. And we have three viruses that are approaching us this winter. We have COVID, we have influenza, and we have RSV. The good news is we have some new tools that we can work with. And the other good news is that we have our expert with us. Once again, we have Dr. Renuga Vivekanadan, who is the Division Chief for Infectious Diseases and a Professor of Medicine at Creighton University. Renuga, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me again. Great. So let's jump right in. Uh, you heard what I just said, and we are approaching a potential, you know, tridemic or triple demic, and uh, people really love using that phrase. Yes. But let, let's tell us a little bit about flu. Let's good old flu. What, what's happening with flu these days, and what can you tell us? Well, influenza. When I'm looking at the trend right now in Australia, we have influenza A. So I'm assuming that's the pattern that we're going to see in US as well in North America. I expect we'll start seeing cases in November, December and start peaking like usual. But you know, we have the vaccine. We have a tool in our toolbox. So when it's available, we should be getting the influenza vaccine. Good. So Australia is giving us a little insight into the type. I'm assuming they're going to adjust the vaccine accordingly to to deal with that that you know that news on that space so let's talk a little bit about covid uh, a lot of news on covid coming up again and new variants but also uh new booster coming out so any news on covid action and in, in the community and in the hospitals these days yeah uh, covid is here to stay uh, i know sadly sadly, sadly yes <laughs> But we got tools. So we are seeing slowly the numbers go up. So I think in, during the winter time, we are going to see more cases, of course. But uh, we recently just got CDC approval for COVID-19 booster. So that's going to be very effective for six months and older. So I think that's going to be one of our best tools to be utilized. So that's so the have, newest update. We have good old influenza. We have new COVID booster shots that are coming out. And the third virus that we've been talking probably the most about is is RSV, which you know everyone traditionally thinks of a infant, you know, virus. But as we've discussed, this actually impacts elderly folks, particularly those with comorbidities. A lot going on in the vaccine space here. So, what's happening on RSV? So in RSV space, you know, like you said, a lot of people think about kids, but in adults, over 10,000 deaths in the United States last year, you know, elderly patients. So what's exciting is for 60 and older, we have RSV vaccine um, and uh, it's approved. So it's going to be really important for patient and primary care providers to have that conversation and be able right. to obtain that vaccine. For kids, on the other hand, now we have a monoclonal antibody. We are very used to monoclonal antibodies. We saw a lot of monoclonals during COVID. You know? exactly. But this one has got a high impact, though, unlike some of the ones we saw you know, during COVID. Exactly. For this one, over 80% re uh, reduction in hospitalization and 90% reduction in ICU admission. So we're during kids, yes. right? We're talking about. Yeah. Yes. So this is a big, this is a big deal. I mean, this it's could big. really reduce the amount of hospitalizations we see with children. Yep. And it's a proof for zero to eight months of age mm -hmm. and high risk kids up to 18 months of age, immunocompromised, cystic fibrosis, uh, premature children. So it's going to be very effective and it's a really good new tool that we have. Let, let's briefly talk about, I love the trial that they did on pregnant women. They had a beautiful randomized controlled trial um, vaccinating pregnant women and then looking how their newborns did and had a high impact, right? I mean, it was but uh, I, I see it's not ready for prime time. Is that right? Not yet. FDA has given approval for 24 to 36 weeks of pregnancy, mm -hmm. and they have seen data. It prevents infection up to three to six months when the baby is born. Um, CDC, I, I believe they will be soon approving. So mm -hmm. soon, new, good news to come soon. This is an unusual. I've actually, I haven't seen many of these vaccines that are given uh, to the pregnant women to protect the infant when they're born. I mean, this is at least the first one I know of. It's pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, I think this and the whooping cough, pertussis has similar mm -hmm. effect as well. But yes, definitely. This is very interesting. All right. So we're approaching the fall. Now people are going to want to know, can I take all three at once? Should I take two at once? Should I take it? Should I, you know, you know, stagger it? Take one in September, one in October, one in, 
Um, so co-administration, is it okay to take two or three or one together? What, what, are, you, what are we suggesting? Um, we don't have official guidelines from CDC yet, but you know a lot of expert guidance, including myself, we have a lot of data on COVID and influenza together for the past couple right. of years. So I would say get COVID and influenza together and wait a couple of weeks for RSV vaccine for those who are eligible would be my yeah. recommendation. Some people like to split their COVID and influenza. Yeah. I mean, that's fine, right? It's I mean, fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. And in terms of when to get it, um, you and when I the talk. vaccines are available. But it's available, right? You should just get it. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't try to time the time. Timing this is not not a good science. Uh, yeah. So just get it and get it done. Last thing, precautions. I don't like to bring up the masks again, but what do you think about when to wear a mask? For me, um, you know, I uh, reflect on hello human kindness. Um, I want to protect others who are vulnerable. So I'm going to be wearing a mask around my vulnerable patients, vulnerable population, and in crowded areas. So I think it'll be individual responsibility going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have the same feeling. I think, you know, I uh, hey, if I'm going to visit an elderly parent or a grandparent, I'm going to put a mask on. And when I'm seeing patients, I do that, particularly in the thick of the flu season and, and all these other viruses. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, thanks for all you do uh, as an infectious disease chief and a professor. Uh, you really lead the way for many of us, and we're just you know so grateful for all the hard work you do. So thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So before I sign off, I'd just like to mention that the fourth week of September is Advanced Practice Provider Week. Take a moment and thank my colleagues for their amazing clinical work and their leadership. It's been a real pleasure working with you. And I want to celebrate the amazing APPs here at Common Spirit Health. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you in two weeks at the next five minute check-in.